Hey there, Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. Today I want to talk to you about a really important tool that should be in every reloader's tool chest. That is a case gauge. I'm going to talk to you about the rifle case gauge in this video, and in another video I'm going to talk to you about the pistol case gauge. Recently I had an issue where I had several different batches of reloaded 308 ammo that had loaded for my LR-308B back here not chamber reliably in the field. And I looked at all sorts of different issues, but a quick check with a case gauge revealed that the sizing die had not been set up properly. I had a, a sizing die set up that I thought was reliable, that I thought was repeatable, but I hadn't checked it. I could have saved myself a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of hassle had I used a case gauge from the get-go. So that's why I wanted to talk about these case gauges. And in fact, recently I've upgraded to L.E. Wilson case gauges for all of the cartridges that I load. It's that important. Let me show you how the case gauge works. So this is the L.E. Wilson case gauge for 308 Winchester. This is going to be pretty much the same for all bottleneck rifle cartridges. Of course, the internal dimensions being different. So there's two ends of the gauge. We've got the headspace measurement side of the gauge and the case trim to length measurement side of the gauge. So if you recall I had this problematic 308 Winchester ammunition. Now had I dropped one of these into the case gauge while I was loading I would see when I scrape over the uh, top of the case trim here that it's not going to clear. This should fall between the top edge of the gauge which measures maximum headspace uh, down to the minimum here which measures minimum headspace. So in this case I've, I'm over maximum which in general is going to be problematic. I'll get to a little bit more detail on that a little bit later in the video. So I could have saved myself a lot of trouble had I taken a look there. Let's look at an ideal setup for using the case gauge. So let's talk about how you'd use the L.E. Wilson rifle case gauge to set up a rifle sizing die. What I've got here is an indicator base. I've got an indicator stand. Using a dial indicator, I have zeroed out the indicator against the maximum headspace measurement portion of the gauge. So we've got that on zero. We'll see negative five on the lower step. And the way that L.E. Wilson suggests that you set up a sizing die is to take a previously fired piece of brass, which we've got here, drop it into the gauge, and get a data measurement. Now I'm nitpicky, so I'm going to use a portion of the case room that doesn't have any stamping on it. You can see here that we're a little over two thousandths above the maximum headspace measurement. For semi-auto rifle, I probably want to knock that down about five thousandths of an inch or so, so that's going to put us at about negative three. If we're between those two ranges of zero and negative five, we're probably going to be okay. For a bolt-action rifle, if you want utmost precision, you might only knock back the shoulder a couple thousandths of an inch, which would put you down at zero for this particular case I just showed you. Now let's look at three different conditions that we will see when we're setting up a sizing die to the recommended dimensions off the gauge and not of previously fired brass. That's going to give us the best results if we want this to be sort of universal ammunition that we could shoot out of any rifle chambered in 308 Winchester in this particular case. So let's drop a case in zero, negative five, just double checking our setup. Here we're at almost negative seven. We've cranked down our seating die just a little bit too much, so I would recommend backing that off just a hair. Now sometimes it helps to have some sort of a blunt object to push the case out with because the case can get lodged in the case gauge. Let's take a look at another condition. Got another piece of brass here. Double check here, we're at about zero, about negative five, and here we're right at negative five. For this rifle, that's going to be plenty close enough. We're within a thousandth or two uh, of where we want to be. Let's take that case out. Let's take a look at a third condition. Okay, so here you can see we haven't knocked back the shoulder at all. 
we're at plus three. So in this case, we would want to crank down the sizing die just slightly and try again. So there you go, you can see just how important and how easy it is to use a case gauge when you are setting up loading cartridges, whether they be rifle or pistol. Now, this is the rifle video. Make sure that you also check out the pistol video because it's a little bit different, a lot of the same concepts, but uh, some slight nuances between the two. Of course, if you like my channel, please subscribe. And as usual, there's a more detailed and full write-up with a lot more information on ultimatereloader.com. You can click on the link below for that. Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.